Okay, so <clears throat> Ronald, I was, uh, do you go by Ronald or Ron? Ron's fine. Ron, okay. Um, Emily had kind of uh, written up a bunch of what you've been doing and what kind of walls you've ran into and things like that. So let me summarize it real quick. Um, and then, you know, you can add any, any, any details to that that you want so that we can kind of move through that and then start getting you some advice. Does that sound good? Sounds fantastic. Okay, so you signed up last year with high expectations for Q4 in terms of sales. You started cold, had no prior following to that. Um, you opened Instagram and Facebook and pretty quickly moved into buying ads and split testing ads. You got some clicks. Um, you weren't capturing email addresses though. Every time you'd post, you'd get some traffic, but it cost you 50 bucks per post. So you were doing, you went right, so you started off and you went right into advertising and basically the advertising wasn't working. Um, you've gone through 25 steps, the 25 steps of troubleshooting problems, traffic problems in the art sales funnel. Um, read everything, listen to some podcasts. Um, looks like there were some issues with maybe your lead capture tool confirmation email. Um, okay. So, so the, the big, the, so, so I, I, I read all of that. I looked at your stats for like the last year and just, can you confirm to me what, when did you basically start? Was it like September? Um, yeah, well, I can tell you that, right? Just go to the website. I can see when I paid my, my bill. Let's just look at through this deal. Oh, actually I see it right here. Uh, you went live August 28th. It looks like. Right. And I wasn't expecting a huge, you know, the world wasn't waiting for me to launch. So right. <laughs> well oh, said, well said. Turns out well it's not said. waiting for any of us. I wasn't expecting a huge uh, reaction at all, but I was expecting a little more. Uh, and, you know, I, the, my first round of uh, announcement was to friends and family. And of course, they all love it. I think I'm great. Um, and I picked up a few emails from friends that way. Uh, and then I, what I noticed was I, as I would post on Facebook, uh, I would get um, some pretty decent traffic there, but people were just looking at what I posted. So I thought, well, okay, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll buy some ads and see how that works. So I watched the, the um, I guess it's a podcast that John Lechner did about how to do, uh, uh, you know, an effective uh, Facebook uh, ad campaign. And so I launched that and paid for it. And I got some great, what I call vanity traffic, yep. uh, where people came to the site and looked at it. And then based on uh, some, I post those results to the Facebook group. And based on the res uh, feedback I got from that coming back, which was, hey, you got to get your blog going uh, and do that. So I went and I looked at the blog and I started that in uh, tried to make that work and um, started posting on that. Same thing, I was getting a lot of people on Instagram and a lot of people on um, Facebook. Uh, you know, I think mostly local business people where uh, I live because I live in the wine country, so the wineries are all over Instagram, of course. And if I mention them, I get a lot of action. Uh, and I got a lot of people looking at my, uh, my sites. Where, uh, where are you located? I'm in uh, Santa Rosa, California. Okay. All right. That's Sonoma County. Do you yep. know California? I do. I'm okay. from California originally. And oh, Patrick okay. Lives, Patrick lives in, in, in Orange County in Southern oh, okay. California. That's where oh, I'm Oh, you know how it's well. all of California is gorgeous. Uh, oh, I think yeah. the wine country is particularly gorgeous. So it, it has some following. Indeed. Uh, just for what it is. And um, so I got traffic to the Facebook sites. I got traffic to the, um, the Instagram sites. Not a lot, but something. And uh, but none of it converted over into email addresses, which I could then do romance marketing to. Correct. So That's I the problem. Thought, well, I'll try and do the romance marketing on the on the um, Facebook account and on the Instagram account as much as I can. But that's really I, I don't think that. I haven't figured out how to do that and make that work. Um, yeah, that's that's probably that's probably not the not the way to go because. Right. because and I wasn't expecting to blow out fourth quarter, make a lot of sales, but I, 
I was hoping to get something, you know, how, some, how many email, how many emails do you have on your list or did you start with? I started uh, from my own personal email account, like 125 emails. And are those like friends and family? Are they like, how many of those are like targeted leads? Those are, are all like actual real buyers. Those are, those are friends and family and people that I've known over the years that, you know, we've corresponded via email. I, I uploaded so, it to MailChimp. Right, um, right. I got gotcha. you. How many, how many, so there's zero quali qualified, like targeted buyers in there? Correct. Okay. So you basically have an email list of zero. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause it like the, the problem here the, 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 there's only one, there's only one priority that you have and it is to bring in quality leads, right? And right. a quality, a qualified lead, um, is, you know, the, the easiest way to, um, the easiest way to explain it is a qualified lead would, would, you know, um, would be someone who contains the key characteristics of your buyers, right? And if you don't know what that is yet, the greatest part about the lead capture tool, and you're talking about this, which I like, which is collecting emails, so you pinpointed the problem, is right. when, people, when people are opting into your lead capture tool, if you are giving them a 20% off deal, and that is the reason to opt in, then you are actually like, you know, it's the, it, it is the most accurate way Nothing is 100% accurate, but it is the most accurate way of finding out whether you're actually bringing in quality traffic. Excellent. And I think you probably already know that because we talked about that in the, in the sales funnel, art sales funnel checklist and things like that. But right. I'm just reiterating that. And, and so, you know, the, the ads didn't work, you know, like they, the, targeting, the targeting didn't work on it. Um, it doesn't mean that the ads won't work, but it is very hard and, and, and Patrick's I'm teeing this up for Patrick because he's probably going <laughs> to knock this one out of the park on you. Um, but because Patrick does not believe in doing cold ads um, anytime early on when you're starting out because you're totally flying blind. And I agree with him. Um, I, I agree with him a lot unless you have a very, 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 very defined targeted niche. Um, you're going to, it's going to be very difficult to, to make cold ads pay. And, um, and you don't want to go cold until you fully exploited the warm and you can't, and, and part of another, another reason for that too, is that you have no idea who to target, right? Cause you don't really, if you don't have a bunch of buyers and you don't have an email list, um, then it just means that you don't know who, you don't know what the key characteristics are of the qualified people. So, right. so where, where I'll move to next though, is have you sold any of your photography and if so, where and to who? Well, the answer to that would be no. Okay. I, I've never even shown any of my photography because it's always, you know, for 50 years, it's just been a hobby, basically. Okay. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'm enjoying it a lot more. I'm getting older. I want to find things that I enjoy doing that I maybe can generate an income from. And I, you know, I like to think that my photography is good, uh, that, uh, you know, the people I have shown it to love it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going on that. Um, as far as qualified, you know, what's a qualified customer look like? You know, high level view, anybody with a wall. Um, once you drop down a little bit lower, it's probably, my assumption is it's gonna be somebody a little older that it's not a college student, although it could be, but probably not. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, I'm thinking someone in their late 20s, late or early 30s, maybe they're starting to, uh, you know, get rid of their roommates, get their own place, uh, maybe buy a house. Now they got walls they got to cover. Uh, so I priced my stuff accordingly. Uh, you know, I, I read everything that, you know, people don't really want to spend more than $500 on a, on a um, piece of art. That's kind of the sweet spot for online art sales. Um, and, you know, I know in my own personal life, I bought artwork and then I have to get it framed, I have to get it matted, you know, everything to hang it on the wall. So the fact that that can all be done in one spot to me is just awesome. And I would think anybody would go for that. With the traffic that I did get from the ads, what I found out is it was an older crowd uh, and more, ironically, more men than women liked my photography, uh, which causes me a little bit of problem because women make all the decisions when it comes to what hangs on the wall. Yeah. But if it was just vanity traffic, you just, you can't really make any assumptions yeah, off of it right. yet. 
you know, cause you could mislead yourself. But the, the, the broader point is that, um, you've got to generate leads. You got, you, you've got the right metric in mind. You gotta, you gotta go generate emails right. and, and qual, qualify, like I'm calling them qualified leads because they're opting in, you know? And yeah. when you're, when you're fresh and you're completely starting out like you are, then I, the easiest place to do that and the most cost effective is to do it in person. Like do it, do a, some local art, art shows oh, okay. or get in at a winery, like do it, get in a local hotel and have a, a little booth. Um, you know, take the prints, get some prints made a couple of them. You don't right. have to break the bank, but like get a little bit of inventory and validate that your art, that your photography is going to sell and then see who buys it and talk to the people who are interested and do the fishbowl technique where you can collect emails there on the spot because you're going to be able to do that in one, in like, you know, in one day, like you might collect 50 or hundred emails in one day. And right. that could, and as you, as you've already experienced to try to do that online when you're flying blind and don't know the targeting is extremely difficult, you know? Right. Um, and anyways, it's, to me, that's the direction that you got to go. And I can talk more about it, but I want to kick it over to Pat. <clears throat> yeah, I've got, I've got a, a sort of a, a couple of different interesting perspectives. And I think the first one is, you know, you get into this and, and you have to make a decision. You have to make a call, right? And it's like, if you want photography to be your hobby, you can go and shoot whatever you want and you can put it on the market and you can see whether or not it sells. And that's one way to do it, right? The other way to do it is... You can say, no, I really want this to be a business. And if I want it to be a business, I'm going to have to come up with something that the market wants and that I can sell. And that's the long and the short of it. And the, the, the sad part of that equation is it's got absolutely nothing to do, in my experience, a little bit with the quality of your photographic skills at the end of the day, right? Like there is certain photography that is interesting that the market wants. There is certain photography that there is an abundance of and the market doesn't want. And you just don't know until you take it there and you get feedback. Now, the, you, you started doing that, and the route that you are doing that is the digital route, which is an incredibly sexy one to do, right? Because you hide behind the website, you pay some traffic, you send some people to the site, you see it works out. And it's great. It's fantastic. But it takes longer and it's more expensive is the, is the long and the short of it. Like when you actually get out in the streets with your work and you have conversations, you see the eye contact of people that are potential buyers and they buy or they don't buy. And more, more often, if they don't buy, you say, hey, what was it that you liked about this work? What was it that you didn't like about this work? Have you bought any art recently? Oh, what was that? That's the only way you truly discover if, you know, the particular style, um, genre, subject material of the photography you're doing now will sell. And it's, it's, it's not something that you can, you can take the shortcut on. Like, you have to find out and you have to validate it as soon as, 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 soon as possible. And it's, it's a super hard concept to get early on. But there's like, you know, there's so many stories of so many businesses out there that thought they were launching with one thing and then the market told them otherwise. And then they launched with the other thing, which was a slight iteration of what they were doing and they did incredibly well, right? So there's, there's a big decision that needs to be made there on your part. You need to say, okay. I love photography. It's something that I love doing outside. It's a great hobby. I'd like to make some money from it. If that's the case, you need to, you need to find some work that the market wants that still satisfies your itch and you still enjoy going out there and creating. And I believe that the, the offline way is, is just the quickest hack is the quickest way to get there. You get the feedback instantaneously. Like even me with all my tricks and knowing how to do things digitally, I would still do it offline because I'm going to get the feedback that I need so much quicker to know whether or not this work will sell, who it will sell to, and for what reasons, how to market it, right? So it's dangerous when you jump on right away in the digital capacity, which is not to say you can't do it, but at a macro, big picture, that's, that's the biggest piece of advice I, I have early on because it's, it's a threshold you have to pass and you have to meet. You have to know whether the market wants uh, what you're offering. And, and the only way to truly prove that it's not, oh my gosh, I love your work. It's awesome. It's not, this is amazing. I'm going to join your email list. It is forking out the plastic or forking out the dollar and turning over the hard, the hard, the hard cash, right? The hard currency. Mm -hmm. That's literally the only way to get there. And what's amazing about it is, you know, the fact that you jumped in in uh, with such a willing uh, um, attitude and gone after it and gone after the digital piece puts you way ahead of most, most other artists that we have on the platform for just getting after it and understanding how important the marketing is. So you just got to solve the original problem. And once you do, I think you'll end up doing fantastic. You'll do great. Again, 
it can be very hard because you can be like, well, wait a minute, I've been shooting for 20 years and I have this incredible uh, archive of photos and I have this style that I really like. And again, there's the decision, right? Like you have to decide whether or not that's the kind of photographer you want to be. That's the only stuff that motivates you to shoot. And so that's what you want to keep doing or switching it up to another particular niche or finding out what the market wants. And there's just, the, you know, the, there's no shortcut to it. There's just no shortcut to it, period. Yeah, you, you have to get to the bottom of it. And while I look at your work, you know, I know, I know you're confident using a camera. I know you've got a good eye. I know you understand light. You got to find out what the market wants and what's your niche in there, right? And it, and it could very well be within one of your niches now, right? Like it might be travel stuff. It might specifically be wine country stuff. It might be specifically vines and, and landscapes in wine country at weird angles. Like it, could, it could be any of those things, right? But you, mm -hmm. won't know, you won't know until you take some shots and go in there and do it. So my advice would be twofold. If you want to do this in a digital way, there's absolutely a digital way to do it. And I'll talk about that in a second. To just further expand on the online way, like, you know, one of the benefits of art store friends, you can get prints made for so insanely cheap in comparison to others out there, especially if you take this up on one of the discounts, they don't need to be huge. They don't need to be gigantic. You take your best um, body of work and you order the prints, order them small and metal or acrylic, something that's ready to hang or fuss, no fuss or canvas, like whatever your preference is, go out there and try to sell them. If you can't sell them, fire sale them and realize that's probably not what the market wants and move on to the next one ask questions and learn. And it's like that feedback loop will get you there. You want to do it on the digital side of things? You can do it on the digital side too. It takes a little bit longer, but the hack is you find these accounts on Instagram that share, um, that, you know, they're kind of like content curators in a way. But what they do is they go out and they scavenge the internet for all the greatest whatever, right? And it could be an interior decorator site or it could be a landscape photography site or it could mm -hmm. be, and you know, they have tons of followers and they just share the best stuff. And you just start hammering their DMs and you say, hey, I'm an aspiring photographer. I love your site. Is there any of my work you would feature on your site? Do you have any advice about my photos? And if those people get motivated, number one, they'll share it. If they're not, they're usually pretty open and honest. They're going to say it doesn't meet the criteria for such and such and such and such reason. So that would be if I was in your shoes right now, what I would do. I would not waste any time on Facebook ads. I would not waste any time on worrying about capturing email addresses or any of the rest. I would just say, I need to validate what my direction is, okay? What, what I think will potentially sell in the market. I need to get those transactions and then I need to double down on it. And like the beauty, the beauty of photography in, in, in sharp contrast in my estimation to you know, being an artist is like the digital photo costs a lot less to take and it's much easier to do and you can, you can fire way more arrows uh, than somebody that has to paint something each and every time, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And so, you know, it, it, you, let you me got throw, it. Go let ahead. me throw this out there if, it, if it's okay. My, kind of my goal, after uh, signing up with you guys was, you know, just to sell something, anything, just to prove that it would work. So that was Absolutely. kind of the validation process. Um, my, in, in the back of my mind, my ultimate goal was to sell my images to things like um, uh, hotel chains, hospitals, medical groups, you know, people who buy multiple pieces. Absolutely. Uh, and to me, that's where the sweet spot was, really. Um, but I wanted to prove that I could sell it to the market at large uh, before I um, focused in on how to do that. So, you know, finding out who the people are that make the decisions at a Marriott or something like that would be huge for me. Because uh, I can make an appointment, walk in with, with a portfolio and say, what do you guys think of this? Would it fit in your hotels? Um, and, you know, I haven't stayed in a, a million Marriott's in my lifetime. I know they spend a lot of money on artwork. Um, so that was kind of where I wanted to go with this and have that just uh, kind of be on an automatic pilot once I, once I got there. That would be success to me. Awesome. I love that. I so love the, I'd love I guess the question is, to find. I, love I, I, can, I can look up all these art shows and the uh, photography contests and photography shows and things like that that are going on in California, they're, they're going on all the time. Yep. And, you know, I've got the expense of traveling, making all the prints, uh, you know, going there and, and presenting and hopefully covering my costs and collecting emails in a slow and steady pattern because I'm starting cold and that's paying your dues. That's what you do. Absolutely. Uh, I was just trying to, you know, jumpstart this and, and forget that part of it and save myself the 
ten or fifteen thousand dollars it's going to be to build up a uh, you know a traveling road show well you whoa 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 let's let's not go there yet though yeah. right get a table do one show right for it shouldn't cost you more than five hundred dollars total okay. in prints all, all in go to go to go to office depot or go to Costco or something get a table you know a used table you right. know or something or a used booth yeah um, set some things on there and just get some validation you know another thing you i mean another thing you can do is and it like to, to just be clear about what we're saying here it's like go anywhere i mean we were talking to a guy the other day and he sells limited editions and he's you know he's kind of in a similar situation although he didn't do ads he tried a bunch of different stuff he was doing romance marketing and he wasn't getting anywhere with it but this guy is legitimately sold like and he's in museums and some different stuff and he's like I just, it, I just don't know how to, how to, how to, how to get anywhere. I'm not getting any, any, you know, in front of the right people. And I told him, I said, I don't care if you go down to the, to the, to the local high end steakhouse. He's in Austin here. So I named the name of the steakhouse mm -hmm. and, I said, and stand out in front and just hold a print out there and have a fishbowl. You'll get, you'll get a hundred more emails. You'll do you'll, that will be more effective in an hour and a half than everything you did for the last six months. Right. <laughs> And it, like, it's, it's fun. And he started laughing, but I said, but I was completely true. I said, go to the country club and give them some prints and have a, have something there, make a deal there, or think of something I'm not thinking of, but you right. know, in his case, that's, that was the way to get, like, I was giving him advice on how to think about how to get the quality leads. Where are the people that are his target audience, which he knew are higher net worth individuals who own ex expensive homes i.e. they're eating at better restaurants, they are potentially members of country clubs and, and around that area, right? In those areas and come up with every idea you can possibly come up with. And as Patrick said, shoot some arrows, right? So, right. so like, this isn't about, like, definitely don't think about investing 10 or $15,000 into a booth. Think about what is the easiest, cheapest way to get out there and to get, some, get, get in front of some strangers you know, and have them look at some of your prints and try to sell a couple and be really aggressive with it, right? So, so like uh, whatever your cost is, like whatever your normal pricing is on your website, like maybe offer a really good discount because all you're trying to do is see if anybody will buy it, you know, and, and you're trying to see which, which type, which content they're gravitating towards because that's going to lead, lead you in a certain direction. And, and then that'll, that'll tell you what, what type of content you'll want to start creating more. And you may, you, you may even want to go all in on that at some point, you know? Right. Um, but you can think of, yes, there's a lot of shows in California, but the most important thing is don't think too much about it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just get in front of the general public that's looking to buy art, however you can in your area, whatever creative ways you can do it and get in front of them and then learn from it. You know, like, You'll do your thing. You'll see whether they liked it after you've talked to them, what they liked, what they didn't like, how many people gave you your email address, and then you can regroup and go, you know what? That content didn't work. Maybe I need some different content or maybe I need to be at a different show. Maybe it was the wrong people, you know? And eventually, you, you will do this a few times, you know, or it might take 10 times. It might take one time. It might take 10 times, but you keep going until you get some action, you know? at right. some point there and then when you find you follow that down that rabbit hole oh wow they seem to be they seem to they seem to be this age group at this show but not at this other show or they seem to be over here and and they seem to live in this area or be in this city or they seem to really like wine um whatever that is you you it's it's the hardest at first but you, it's it's in business it's all a process of just honing in and focusing in on that more and more and more and, and compounding it. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Makes sense. Got it. And it's also like, you know, the act of going and doing that work and then being sure to ask the important questions, which is why the in-person is so much better than the digital. It's like, if I come up, if you come up to uh, my booth, right? And I'm sitting there and I've got all my photographs and they're all spread out and they're all ready to go. Hey, what's your name? Ron. Ron, nice to meet you. Uh, so here, take a look at my work. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, which ones are your favorites? And okay, well, what do you like about it? 
Oh, that's very interesting. Would you buy it? No, you're not interested. You're not in the market. Interesting. Let me ask you, what's the, what's the last photograph you bought? Oh, is that right? How many of them did you buy? What was the subject material? Um, what, photog what photography, I mean, you stopped, you're clearly into photography. What photography are you really into? It's like by going through that process and asking those questions is, is when you start to discover, oh, wait a minute, here's a subject material that's totally unexploited, that people would seem to be diehard about, uh, that I can run in that direction. And then you go and produce some photos and you come back in two weeks and you have those in the booth and all of a sudden it's like, Yahtzee, bing, 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 you sold a couple of them. It's like, okay, now I've got something. That's the quickest, one of the quickest ways in my estimation to get there. So that's sort of the, the you know, the, the overarching um, unknown truth of it all is that like by asking the right questions and having those conversations, you learn so much more than you can in a digital capacity. Okay, that makes good sense. I've got some great action items here. Yeah, and then, and then uh, you know, when it comes to like the commercial side of things, you, you, I think you know how to, how to get to the commercial people, like the way to do that. I mean, do you, like, what do you think that is? Well, I, you know, the way I would go about it is just start looking at who buys the balloons, you know, or who buys the art in the, in these uh, companies whenever they're uh, re, re um, renovating a building or, uh, or, or building out a building. And I believe there's a outfit up in uh, Seattle that does quite a bit of that architectural work with the architects. Um, and you can become a, you know, member of their artistic team. You give up a big bite, but you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of exposure, I'll put it that way. So, yeah, already, so what's that? So, so the, the, the point I'm making there is the concept is exactly the same, right? Every, any buyer of a hotel or a, you know, restaurant chain or an interior designer is a, you know, that's buying photography is a quote unquote qualified lead, right? Yeah. It's another one. They just happen to be a different type of qualified lead. They are, they buy, they're, they're a buyer for a business rather than like just a consumer buying for their home. Right. And so <clears throat> all you do there is find as many of those people as you can and contact all of them. And you know, like it's, it's like a sales process, right? You cold call right. them, you cold email them, you send them the work, you present it and see if they like it and you go. Now you can do that, uh, you know, whenever you want. Um, you can decide whether you're better off doing that once you get some traction, it's probably a better idea. But nothing is stopping you at all from finding 10 of them today or 20 of them and emailing every single one of them. Right. And I would recommend doing it local to your area um, because that way you can drive to them and it's really easy to show them work and all that stuff. But, but you can email them, you can show them your work. You can say, you know, um, like you can offer them a great deal. Say you're, you know, you're trying to break into the hospitality market or whatever type of a market. And for your first five customers, you're going to give them a great deal. So if you're looking to like outfit an office or a hotel or anything like that, you know, you, you'd love to hook, hook them up. Um, but nothing's stopping you from doing that either. But it's a game of finding the qualified leads and uh, that, are, that, are, that are interested in your type of product, that have an emotional connection of some sort to your product or a need to your product, and then expanding that. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm just adding to my uh, to-do list while I'm talking to you guys. So I need to buy a bunch of sample prints to have something physical in a portfolio. Uh, do start to do some prospecting, qualify some leads, do some cold calling, get some appointments, go and get a presentation, drive them to the website where they can get a discount. Absolutely. Exactly. And so like any of those, like make a list. We're giving you ideas right now, but you should be able to create 10 times more ideas from the ideas we're giving you. And by the way, you don't, you don't about. need to take notes because we email you the, the <laughs> audio, the audio, the, the call afterwards. Oh, well, it just helps me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But, uh, but create a list and, and I consider this list of ideas are like these arrows, like you're shooting arrows, bow and arrow, right? Mm -hmm. And don't go all in on any one of these too much. You just want to do a simple test, you know, like, so you try an art show. Maybe there's two art shows in two different areas and you're like, you know what? I'm not sure about each. So you try. 
pick the best one, try that one, you know? And then if you want to try the other one, make your adjustments and try the other one. Um, try, you know, emailing uh, or cold outreach, as I would call it, to some local interior designers or, uh, you know, hotel buyers or whatever you want to call it, right? All of these things are different, different things. Maybe reach out to some architects, maybe reach out to, you know, uh, some restaurants. I, I don't know, but there's a lot of those things can be done. Those are all different arrows that you can fire. And I would look to do as many of those as you possibly can with, with enough of a test. Like, like in other words, when you go to a show, you've got some pieces there and, and you're giving it a shot, you know? So you, so when you leave that, that show, you're like, wow, I had some of what I thought were some of my best pieces that my family and friends really liked and my prices were aggressive and I had a fishbowl there, like, you know, and I didn't really collect a lot of emails and nobody bought my work. Then it's like, Hey, you know, you just got it in front of some buyers, some people who were going to the shows. And if other people at that art fair were, were, you know, were selling work, um, and, and you weren't, then you kind of know right there that the content didn't work, you know? Right. Uh, and you need to make some sort of an adjustment, but, but try as many different, uh, tactics that you can to try to figure out where you can get some traction. That makes perfect sense. And then I think the important part is to tie this back to once you find that traction and you start collecting emails from it, you know, then you can figure out ways to, you know, pour gasoline on it and really expand upon it. And then that's where the art storefronts marketing plan will really start helping you because once you right. start finding this, these qualified leads, as I'm talking about, these emails of people that are actually potential real buyers of your stuff and are interested in your work, then you have to nurture them. You have to, you know, um, you got to stay top of mind. And uh, so that when they have a need, um, whether it's wall space or a gift or anything like that, that you're the person that they want to buy from, right? And that's right. where the romance marketing and the art marketing calendar and all that stuff, that's where you will really leverage that because if you can just simply bring in qualified leads and find those targeted people, the art marketing calendar will kind of, and your website will take care of the rest. The technology will, will do its thing and the art marketing calendar, as you know, will bring them to a close, right? It's designed to, to nurture and foster those relationships. It's designed to expand upon that audience to help you like when you get qualified leads to get more qualified leads. Um, uh, and then, and then with the holidays and all that stuff, it will help bring them to a close with all of the, the discounting and all the stuff that we do, all that, all those tactics. Yeah. It's definitely the first step that I'm missing. Yep. Um, and you know, and I figured kind of figured that out right away was that, you know, I just, I don't have the people to market to and that's what I need to get. So exactly. there's ways of doing that. I mean, where I live, we get a lot of tourists from all over the world here. Uh, and they're all looking for stuff to do. They're all going to coffee shops. They're all going to different areas, uh, you know, on their trip here. Uh, and these people all have money. You don't come to the wine country unless you have a pretty good disposable income. Um, so they're all going to want a souvenir to take with them. And uh, just talking to you guys, I'm thinking of certain coffee shops and certain high tourist areas where I could probably love, love this, love everything you're saying right now. Great it's, direction it's to go. Images up there and, and, you know, a sign that says, Hey, go to my website, and register and get, uh, you know, pick your medium, pick your size and get a, you know, 20% discount, you know, for your time. And, um, you know, something people don't, they're not put on the spot right there, but they could, they could do it right there on their uh, phone. And, uh, I think that would uh, probably be worth my time. Yeah, or you have inventory on the spot of whatever they just saw, you know? Yeah. Because I, whenever I go to Napa, I, I usually come home with a lot more than I, than I came there with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe know? I should have a photography club like they have wine clubs, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, I think you're kind of hitting on another point that is totally resonating with Pat and I. You just saw our reaction. But, you know, you have an arbitrage like given the location that you're in, you know, right. It's like, just like a photographer who lives in Austin has an arbitrage, i.e. an advantage 
you know, because he lives here. So mm -hmm. he can hit all the locations. He knows what all the cool locations are that people love. He can hit it at the right time of day, you know, and, and really just own that. And he has an advantage over every other photographer in the world because he knows that area, you know, and that's his advantage. That's his, it's not just his niche. That's his advantage. If he there, but if he tries to compete with images of animals in wildlife in Africa, I mean, come on, that's not, he has no advantage. So, you know, you want to fight on turf, you know, where, where you might have an advantage and here's, and then if you can, if you can create success there, you may be able to expand into other content from all over the world or whatever, but you got to start somewhere where you have an arbitrage, you right. know, and you've definitely got one right where you're at right there. And, um, so that's really interesting. You know, the other, the, I, I love what you're saying about the local restaurants and the local coffee shops. I want to tell you something else that, um, I was talking to, a uh, another, uh, business owner and he was talking about like, you know, um, he was talking about like a, a Mexican restaurant that he wanted to start you know, and was asking me for advice. And I was like, I was asking him, you know, what's your specialty? And he said, you know, they're, they're tacos and they're, and they're burritos, like this whole like natural take that he had on them. Right. I said, okay, whatever, whatever. And I said, have you ever sold them to anybody? And he's like, no. I said, well, well, what's the deal? Why, why do you think you can do this? Well, whenever we have people come over to our house and we have a party, you know, I make all the food and people just love it. They just, they just can't get enough of it. They love it. They're talking about it. They tell me I got to start a business you know? And I said, so you've never sold any. And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, then why are you looking to raise money to like open a restaurant right now? Like you're, you're ready to go all in on the restaurant, but you haven't even sold any. He's like, well, well, well what, how, how do you sell any? And I said, make some tacos, make some burritos, put them in a little thing, make like 20 of them, go to a local office building, go to five office buildings and sell them, offer them for $2 each or for $5 each and sell. If you can't sell out of them, at a local office building in Austin somewhere, you know, where there's a, a gazillion of them, right? Where a ton of people are walking around and nobody's going to bother you. If you can't sell those things and put up a sign, gourmet, you know, tacos and have a little thing and do that, forget it. The whole thing's done, you know? And so I bring that up because there's like, there are, there are people, there are companies that go around to office buildings and even sell art. You know, I, it's, it's happened to me before. I've seen them happen in, uh, They've come into my offices like in Newport Beach, in Irvine, and you know, in, in Orange County, and, mm -hmm. uh, and they've happened in Austin as well. And I've had employees buy the art, like literally salespeople and, and customer service people buy the art of these, of, from these people who are just walking into the offices, literally cold calling offices, no different than like an insurance agent or a commercial real estate broker would and saying, oh, hey, I just wanted to see if you guys wanted any art. I got a great deal on this stuff walking in with metal prints and some beautiful stuff and people just buy them right on the spot, you know? Mm -hmm. So there, there are a gazillion ways for you to, you know, hack this and get in front of people and get your art in front of people and get the answers that Pat and I are telling you to do and to do it like today, like you could do it today or tomorrow. And you'll, you will, if you do this tomorrow uh, and the next day, you will get your art and, and get more feedback and uh, from real people than you probably have in the last, you know, four or five, six months that you've been after this. Right. And so yeah, you just, it's, right, I haven't been getting much there. feedback at all from what I've been doing. So. What's that? I said I haven't been getting much feedback at all from what I've been doing. Exactly. And without that done. feedback, you're just not making any progress. You right. Know? Yep. And that's the biggest thing. Like the, the in the digital in the digital sphere, that's how that's how it works. Like, you know, it's no different than okay. You want to talk about eating our own dog food? What are Nick and I doing right now? <laughs> right. We're talking to a customer. Why? Because that's how you get the actual feedback. Right. right. Not by like filling out forms or sending an email. Like, you know, trust me, we, we eat our own dog food. Everything that we recommend, we're... Like, oh, no, I, I, I appreciate the, the advice and the, uh, you know, the pep talk and everything else here. A uh, little feedback on, the si on your site. I love it. Uh, it's can be challenging and that you want to do something. And the next thing you know, you're going down a rabbit hole uh, sure. and trying to figure out how to do it because there's just so much uh, on the site um, and so many things you want to, you want to do. Right. Uh, and they're in all different spots. So your support team is spot on. They've been very helpful to me on everything I've been trying to do. 
So you guys run a good ship that way, that's for sure. We appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Well, Ron, is there anything else? Any other questions, or do you think you got a? You've got. Well, no, I've got I've got a lot of, on my on my sheet here, so a lot of things I could do that I could start doing immediately. And I just need to do it. Exactly. Go find that traction, right? Yeah. That's all you got to do. Go find that traction. If whatever you did didn't work, do the next thing, and then all do right. the next so thing. And yesterday, I ordered a print for a print giveaway to do. Uh, but I think what I need to do is order more prints to, you know, have a little pop-up art show. You should yeah. definitely do that print giveaway and see what happens from it. Oh, yeah, I'm doing uh, that as well. But, but uh, you know, the other question I had for you real quick before we go is, did yeah. you have the lead capture tool on, like, exactly according to best practices the whole time you've been live? Uh, I've just done, yeah, I've done what you guys have suggested. Um, so it's been on the whole time and you, I turned it off at Christmas time. Okay. Because you know, I had that Christmas, uh, right. right. Uh, thing going on. Um, uh, that Christmas, uh, what was it? Um, 20% of or whatever discount that I offered at that time. Right. Um, from black Friday till January 2nd. So I, I turned off the lead capture tool where I got a problem with it was turning it back on and making it work. But and I don't know. You guys could see my screen, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I thought you could. I was going to show you, like, yesterday when I ordered this email, or when I ordered the uh, print for uh, my giveaway, I've got, I got a verification email. You know, it says, you know, here's your order receipt and uh, to me. Uh, and it shows the name of my company. And then it says, shows uh, your slogan goes here. I'm trying to figure out, you know, where do I find the – form to edit that so I can actually either remove it or put a, a slogan in. Um, and, you know, it's that kind of little thing, little detail things that I get caught up in. And I could spend hours trying to figure it out on, on the site to get to that. Yeah. And none of that, it, it, the, the support team will help you with that. But you real, you know that those are the things that, those are the shiny objects that they right. just don't matter. I mean, I know people, Pat does too, we've talked to them, you know, that they come in, they come in with broken sites and they don't even have e-commerce. They don't even have a store. And people are emailing them on their contact form, on their broken site, just saying, hey, I just want to buy your art. I want to buy a piece. I want to buy a piece. None no. of that stuff matters, right? Like, yeah. It's like the only thing that matters is, is, is getting, building your list and getting qualified people in, and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, if people want to buy your art, they're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. They're going to find a way to contact you. You're going to see all of the signs, you know? And they're not going to, they're not looking at that. They don't care. You know, you can fix it later. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you, you, you know that 99% of your time just needs to be in one area and everything, if everything else is a little broken, don't worry about it because nobody's using your site anyway, right? The real buyers, they're not even seeing it. Right. They're not using it anyway. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. When I, when I start doing this thing, uh, a lot of times I'm thinking, oh yeah, I've got a, got to do this. I've got to do that. And I'm like, well, nobody's going to this site. So I'm only doing that for myself. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We hear it all the time. Yeah. It, you all know, right, guys. Are... Yeah. I, okay. I appreciate you really. I do taking your time out to spend on my problems. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've uh, given me some good advice here and I'll definitely follow through on it. Excellent. Well, we look, we look forward to hearing how it goes and keep us posted. And yeah, keep us posted. All right, guys. Okay, thanks, Ron. All right, take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.